setting the particle visibility is another range of uh, questions that we received uh, recently. Lots of people ask how do they remove particles or hide them while they're rendering and so on based on various input channels. So uh, there are two approaches to this. The one is to set the density of the particle to zero and the particle um, uses the density channel to actually accumulate the volumetric density uh, while the renderer is running through the volume. But if you set it to zero then that particle has no influence on light attenuation or alpha output in the final image so uh, setting the density to zero is one way to do it but all the particles still get loaded into memory so if you have 10 million particles um, you are loading 10 million particles but possibly rendering 1 million of them. It's a much better idea to actually set the selection channel which normally is used just like on meshes to control the deformation uh, of influence of modifiers uh, but in this case you can use the corrector delete modifier and pretty much delete a particle based on uh, some input data and it won't load into memory which will result in faster rendering. So let's take a look for example visibility by velocity. Let's say that we take the velocity magnitude just like we have it right now but instead of outputting uh, as a vector I'm going to remove these nodes and I'm going to switch this guy here to selection and if I switch to selection channel uh, now we're getting a value of zero when uh, the velocity is zero and to get in a value of one when the velocity is close to 220 and uh, the adding of a delete modifier the corrector delete we have an icon somewhere here here it is delete this modifier has two modes. The one deletes anything that's greater than zero and suddenly all the particles are gone because all the particles have a value that is greater than zero because they are all moving. They have velocity that's positive, uh, velocity magnitude that's positive. But there is also an option that says use the selection as a soft selection. That means use the gradient between zero and one to decide the probability for a particle to actually be deleted. So we have the ID channel to track the particles and then we say particles uh, that have a velocity of zero right now will have a different, let me see if that uh, is what we're doing. Yeah, we have a different probability to be deleted and we can actually tweak these numbers. Again, we can, for example, add an exponent and start uh, changing the number here and you see with a very low number here, I actually get a different behavior where particles that are very fast are actually been deleted uh, with a much higher probability. Basically I shifted, the, uh, bent the curve so uh, slow particles have a very low probability and they actually stay there mostly and then the faster they get the more they are getting deleted. Instead of doing this I can actually do it completely uh, binary. I can go and say instead of using this I'm going to use a uh, logical test where I'll switch this to logic and to say if the velocity is less than let's say 0 0.5 because I'm normalizing it here. Um, let's see, um, this currently doesn't evaluate because a boolean operator in magma actually produces an integer and we're expecting a float here. So I have already a button uh, conveniently located inside every logical operator to convert the output to a float and now uh, we have anything that is less than 0 0.5 is producing a value of 1 because the result is true and anything that is greater than 0 0.5 velocity is producing a value of 0, false, so uh, 0 means no selection and 1 means full selection. So you see in the beginning here we have no particles at all and if I start changing this number we're going to see that when we go to around 0 0.8, only the particles hear the collision and after that when they start falling down and getting more speed because we have a gravity pulling them down, start appearing and all the other particles are actually completely gone. So here we're culling particles based on velocity and we can do the same, absolutely the same based on uh, um, let's say age or even, even color or any other date. A similar case but slightly different because it depends on uh, the camera orientation uh, was 
another user question that came in, and it was how do I delete particles depending on the direction of the like orientation of the vector relative to the camera. So uh, particles that are moving towards the camera gets uh, completely deleted, and particles that are uh, moving perpendicular to the camera uh, viewing direction actually stay. I have a scene for this. Let's see where it is here. Uh, this is by velocity angle. Uh, basically, I have saved uh, again a particle flow, which in this case was emitting particles radially in the horizontal plane. And uh, I'm loading them, they are already saved to a PRT file, and I'm loading them on a PRT loader. And on this PRT loader, I'll add a new magma modifier, open the editor, and show you two different approaches to do this. I will again add selection output as uh, the output channel and I'll need a delete uh, modifier on top set to soft selection. What I need in this case is the velocity itself, that means the vector, this is the velocity, and one thing I can do is I can say oh, I'm going to uh, do a uh, vector normalize and uh, I'll output this here even though currently it doesn't make sense. I'm normalizing the velocity and I'm going to take the dot product, to press the uh, dot the period key on the bottom of the key button and get the vector dot. And then I'll need the Z axis, actually it's the minus Z that the camera is using to look at the scene, but that's good enough. Um, I will need an input object, I press IO and that gives me input object uh, to pick the camera and I already have a uh, property query option uh, to a button to add quickly to this uh, uh, chain here and the defaults of the list actually show me a couple of typical node properties including center, rotation, scale and so on and I have the transform row 3 which is the z-axis so I can add this I'll say add I'll remove the position because I don't really care for it and I'm going to pick the camera in this I see the camera here, so I'll just say pick scene object. Now the camera z-axis is here. Uh, it's probably a good idea to normalize it also because a dot product should be uh, uh, between two normal vectors, even though most probably your camera has uh, non-scaled transformation, so it's just a precaution. And at this point, we have a vector dot product which should be uh, going between uh, 0 and 1. Let's see what happens. If I enable the modifier to auto-update, I have now uh, the camera and if I start moving the camera around to see the particles that are uh, parallel to the viewing direction are being caught, I'm going to close this and I'll even mod minimize this so I can see here in the top viewport when I'm changing my camera, particles that are looking in my direction are being deleted. And this is because the z-axis is actually pointing back, so these are parallel, pointing in the same direction mostly, and if they're pointing approximately in the same direction, they get a value that goes here from 0 to 1 over here, and these guys get a different chance for deletion. So, two things that I can do. First, I can introduce a uh, absolute value, so if the result of the dot product is negative, that means for these particles pointing exactly in, along the minus z axis, I can do a, b, which is the absolute value, and now the back is also being deleted just like the front. And the other thing that I can do is I can introduce a exponent or a curve. I'll add a power operator, add an exponent, I can expose it in the user interface and start tweaking it. And uh, you see that this is changing the probability for deletion. So when I go closer to zero, I'm going to delete more and more of the particles that are not exactly perpendicular but somewhere in between. So I have a lot of uh, tweaking controls now to actually decide how many particles you're going to get in the end. And if this was a spherical emission in all directions, then it would affect all the particles. So here we would have a circle of curled particles and around we would get all the particles moving in all directions. Actually, I mentioned that there is a second way to do this and I just showed you the more uh, complicated way, but I felt that this is the more uh, logical approach, but actually the simpler way to do this would be to transform the vector into camera space. So I don't need this uh, vector dot operation, and uh, I'll keep the rest approximately the same, but I'll, um, I'm going to convert this uh, velocity into camera space, and so when I do conversion of velocity into camera space, it's a vector, um, I don't need, uh, let me see, 
um, it's going to be uh, necessary to actually get the uh, z axis, I mean the z component of the velocity, which when it's converted into camera space will be 1 when it's parallel to the camera and 0 when it's perpendicular. So uh, I will need to take the uh, convert breakout, which gives me right now the actually the, the x-axis by default, and you see that immediately the particles that have a, an x-axis of 1, that means the perpendicular ones to the camera are already cold, and I can wire this from z into the absolute value, and now I'm actually culling what I wanted, and all these nodes I don't really need anymore. Everything else works the same, so if I uh, start changing this value, it's performing the same, but I'm actually using a few nodes less, and the result is pretty much the same. Velocity, into camera space, and so on. Now, there is a, a little bit of a hiccup here. If I start moving my camera, the modifier won't update dynamically, and the reason is I'm using two camera, and the two camera is actually reading the transformation matrix of the viewport, but it's not getting, uh, the modifier itself is not dependent on the camera, it doesn't know that it has to update. You can fix this in two ways, you can make it dependent by actually introducing an uh, input operate, uh, input object operate and picking the camera to make the dependency, or you can use the convert to space, which will do the same, and in this case I'm, I'll do an input object and pick the camera to actually feed the transform object into the true space operator and make the dependency. So in this case, uh, moving the camera around will actually update. 